Fearless investors, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I am super stoked about this week's podcast. We have a gentleman that I personally is one of my favorite guys. Uh, recently met him at the STR Wealth Conference, uh, was there. He was part of the Di Diamond Membership Group, uh, which is essentially a group of just big hitters. Um, and I knew that we needed to get him on the podcast. But uh, in this podcast, we're going to be doing a deep dive on Mark Reed's portfolio. So Mark Reed is a GC out of Baltimore who has managed to build his short-term rental portfolio literally from the ground up. He specializes in construction of essentially revitalizing some of these older Baltimore neighborhoods into a short-term rental portfolio that serves him in a multitude of different ways. So really fascinating. Uh, he had some nuggets to drop, so make sure you stay tuned. Let's go ahead and dive right into the podcast. Fearless investors, welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast. I'm excited for this one. Uh, we have with us today a very special guest. Me and this gentleman clicked right away. Uh, I met him at the STR conference in Tennessee and uh, we got to chopping it up, became immediate friends, heard his story, was fascinated, and now we are blessed to have him in our presence today. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Reed. Mark, welcome to the show, my man. Well, man, thank you so much. I mean, I guess it's just a testament to be nice to everybody. We just started talking and <laughs> here we are. Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I I, I've told you this before. Um, you know, the value of those workshops are always, to me, the people that you walk away with, you know, the, the friendships, right? And uh, you're in that category, so I'm, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I'm super excited to share with everybody your, your story, right? Because you are a very niche operator in a very niche industry of short-term rentals. You, you utilize your GC license to be able to build your portfolio from the ground up, which I think is super fascinating. Um, and so if you don't mind, um, we'd, I'd love for you to kind of introduce yourself and kind of your business model and just tell us a little bit about what you do. Great. Okay. What I'll try to do is just go real high level at first so that everybody okay. can kind of get a feel and then I can, we can double click something if someone's interested in that. But basically <laughs> what happened is I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I kind of started out uh, over 20 years ago as just a regular kind of landlord, traditional rentals. I was a W-2 employee for many years working in the pharmaceutical industry primarily. And uh, I moved in 2005 to Washington, D.C. Um, and I was in Washington, D.C. was working um, for a, a pharmaceutical company there as well and uh, had kind of renovated a, what we call in Los Angeles, a duplex, you may call a row home or a brownstone, depending on where you're from, but I just renovated a place. I was living in the top and the bottom was vacant. Um, fast forward to 2018, a friend of mine says, hey, why don't you do this new Airbnb thing? And uh, I didn't know much about it, did a little bit of research and uh, just kind of jumped in it. Fast forward to 2019, I meet a beautiful woman. She tells me about the Baltimore, Maryland market where you can buy a house, believe it or not, for $5,000. I'm like, I don't believe it. I go to this auction and I end up buying four houses. I do not know what came <laughs> over. Like, I'm a man of faith. And so I just had to be divine intervention in the Lord moving me somewhere. I just... I didn't get it. I bought four properties, sight unseen, went to go see them the next day. And I mean no disrespect to my friends, my dear friends in Baltimore, Maryland, but it looked like something from a movie set. I mean, it just, <laughs> the house on each side of it was demolished. There was just trash piled high in the streets. And it was, it was, I mean, I just, uh, it, it was something to behold. Let me just say it like that. <laughs> I don't even know why I followed through on actually like buying it because you can, you have to give a deposit, but you can like just leave the deposit. I do not know. Again, I'm putting that all on my Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, why I bought it. But I bought it, fast forward, 
Um, uh, people that were supposed to be living there weren't paying rent, tried to get a rental company manager, property manager, that didn't work out. So what I ended up doing was making a decision that I was going to have to rehabilitate these properties, just going to have to take them down to the studs and rehabilitate them. And I did one that led to two, that led to five, that led to 10, that led to 20. <laughs> And right now, if I talk to you, I currently have 23 properties that I have built, fully built, fully renovated, fully furnished, and am managing as a property manager while also being a contractor and obviously building them as well. So um, I really kind of have three businesses. Uh, one is obviously a contractor. Two is my Airbnb business and then three is kind of my co-host arbitrage play because i do do some arbitrage as well so i kind of look at it as like three buckets two of them closely related yeah man that is a fascinating story i didn't know that's how you started i uh you know it's interesting i feel like that's how all rational decisions are made is it starts with a woman right so <laughs> Uh, but it turned out to be an incredible move, it sounds like, and uh, and here you are. And so I uh, walk me through a little bit as to because you you know you obviously you you buy these sight unseen, you don't really know what you get yourself into. You then see them. It's at a point where it's like I got to go down to the studs. What what made you then once you've renovated these properties, look at them and decide, hey, what if we jump into the short term rental space? Because I imagine, right, you bought these probably at an auction for a great price. You probably have incredible equity in them because of that. And so did you, well, I guess, where was where was the connection made to short-term rental specifically? Why didn't you well, just throw normal renters it's in It's a great, great and insightful question. So what basically happened, I do my first one, and it's beautiful. But I want you to imagine this. And if I could access my pictures, I could even send it to you guys. But um Imagine a street of 15 homes on it and one home is redone and the rest of them are literally boarded up. Some of them, <laughs> the front facade is crumbling. Some of them don't look like doorsteps or steps to walk up to them. So who is going to rent that home from there? <laughs> you better give me time. Yeah. So what I my infinite wisdom was I did another one. Uh, so I have, so actually I did two at once. So now I've got two homes on a block, same thing, nothing else around it, boarded up. I try to find traditional renters. And first of all, no one's going to stay there like that. So I am literally, I am less than one mile from John Hopkins Hospital main campus, which is at 1800 Orlean Street less than one mile. You can see John Hopkins from the bedroom window. Incredible so spot. Yeah. It just decided, I told you it was divine. So yeah. I uh, uh, just decided I'm going to um, put this on Airbnb. Let me tell you how dumb I was. I thought people would stay there. I mean, <laughs> it, I got to tell you this and I, this is reality. Um, you know, um, uh, Baltimore is a majority African American city. Yep. And the uh, neighborhood is uh, African American neighborhood. My average, especially in my first year, we're going back to uh, 2019, uh, 2019, 2020 ish. The, the profile, the avatar of the average uh, uh, travel nurse that I host is a 26 year old white woman. That's just what it was. Yeah. And, and, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I had these two women from Texas, mad. Well, I can't, maybe I shouldn't say their names. They came and for some reason they weren't scared to death. They, <laughs> they, I told them, I was like, Hey, I'm a contractor. I'm building this up. They could see it was a work site next door to them. And apparently they were comfortable. Let me tell you what happened. Lame. They stayed three months, you know, the typical 90 day contract. They renewed. One of the young ladies said she was going somewhere else. The other lady said, can I stay with you longer? I'm like, are you kidding? You can stay forever. <laughs> she stayed two months by herself. And oh. uh, 
you know, and it just started building on itself. And I, yeah. I got to tell you, from, from late 19, 2019 to 2020, obviously everybody knows it was a pandemic. I was building this block out and I was in a perpetual sold out state. Everything wow. was booked and it was wow. just like, rent, raise the rent, it's all good. I mean, it was like I couldn't get houses online fast enough. So for the first 10 houses, never had any vacancies. I would say I was at a, I had to be at a 75 to 80 percent um renewal rate so you know once your first contract ran out people were all automatically going to do a second contract sometimes a third contract and yeah. it just kept like that so i'm building I'm, I'm working with my lender my lender thinks i'm crazy because i want to do all this i'm like look it's working and kind yeah. of everybody shaking their head like it is working we don't know why but it's working <laughs> that's awesome man what a fascinating story and uh, I think you, uh, I feel, I, I want to digest a lot of it because you prove a lot of like, I feel like industry, like specific models. Um, one of them being that like, you know, sometimes what we don't know is an area that maybe needs, is a little bit more scarier. Like what we know, sometimes the travelers don't, nor do they care, right? And as long as you can deliver on experience, which you did, it ends up being, you know, a good opportunity for somebody like nurses, but then to be able to then go in and build and continue to build out and prove the model is incredible. So I guess my question then is like, do you, at your point with your portfolio now, you know, this specific experience that you sp spoke about, are all of your doors pretty much in that same neighborhood? Are they close or yeah, what's it look like? There? extremely close you could throw a rope around them i mean basically nice. the first uh 13 homes i did were on the 2100 block of east chase street and nice. then the next tranche which would, would be 15 homes are on the 2200 block of east chase street so just literally one block over and then nice. i have there's a block that bisect that i have like three on one block and then there's a block one over and i have three on that side so it's a it's it's really weird how it kind of all came together where all the houses are centrally located and um you know kind of really convenient easy access um especially for my for my construction crews to kind of get from one to the other but uh, 100%. Yes, uh, uh sometimes called an assemblage you know when you're when you're a developer and you get lots right next to each other or are very close to each other they they refer to that as assemblage and this assemblage came together like the the first uh 13 that i did i mean we don't even have time to tell you how what kind of i mean blessing I, that's all i can call it that i was able to get all those the second 15 that i got was from a guy who had been having a concept of rebuilding the 2200 block of east chase and he basically was a failed developer he couldn't get any funding he called me one day and he was like, the city's going to take this. Well, he didn't say the city's going to take this from me, but I knew they were. And he <laughs> goes, you buy these from me today, I'll make you a great deal. And I mean, basically in one day, I bought a bunch of properties from him and, it, and you know, the, it just kept rolling. So yeah, good for you, man. That's awesome. You know, six uh, fearless community. If you're listening to this, I, I know some of y'all got questions. So if y'all got questions, drop them in the comments. I'm gonna keep diving into this story because I, it's you, you really are a niche within a niche, brother. I mean, because what you managed to do has been extremely valuable, especially like you know, I because this is the question I had. Now that you've kind of, it almost seems like you're resurrecting this part of of Baltimore. And with that being said. Have you seen some benefits of, you know, maybe resale value of your properties, especially considering because they're pulling comps right of that area, and right. now that you have so many in a within a block, you know, is that is that a strategy that you anticipated walking into this, knowing that hey, if I do enough of these, I'm going to raise the appreciable value of everything around it, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Right, that's a great question, and there's. It's multifaceted. I, I've got to tell you that directly across the street. So again, the first block that I worked on, the 2100 block of East Chase, directly across the street 
is something called the Hohen Building. And the Hohen Building was a big warehouse where they did Hohen lithograph. So they printed for um, a certain age listener, they used to print something called National Geographics, which I think is, <laughs> I don't know, maybe mine, or they could be, but National Geographic <laughs> magazine. And they also printed Topps baseball cards there. So this is oh. a big structure. And so um, when I first started buying homes off this block, and, and the first, very first home I bought was in 2017, um, that place was boarded up and whatnot. Um, the city and the state of Maryland, and I believe there was even some federal funds, pumped thirty million dollars into this home at the Grant Building to make it a business incubator. And so now it's like beautifully restored, and it is a home to something called ABC, which is the Association of Builders and Contractors, literally in the middle of a dilapidated disinvested neighborhood. They have this state of the art building where they actually have a tractor simulator in there. They have like an electric pole in there. They, they have like a plumbing. They have all the necessary tools to teach contractors and tradesmen their craft. Um, the people that live in this neighborhood don't even know what's in there. It's so yeah. ridiculous. They also have Morgan State University as a historically black college and they probably have a third of the building. They also have a guy that's a former football player that is in animation and he produces material for Nickelodeon and he has a big wing of the building. So imagine right. kind of this one block kind of being, I guess for lack of a better word, gentrified. Yeah. And as we're gentrifying that block and people are coming in because they're going to the home building, all of a sudden they're seeing my work kind of blossoming, yeah. if you will. And yeah. so um, to your question, um, you know, oh, about value, values were going up, up and up. And what happened was we ran in 2022. And when the interest rate started coming up, that was a problem for a couple of things. One, um, I was building these houses with um, uh, uh, construction yeah. lines. Yeah, yes. debt, thank you. And then refining out of it. And then, you know, continuing, because I like to refi out of it, get some money, I furnish it with that money, and then I just rinse and repeat. I'm sure several people are like, oh, the Burr method, of course. So I'm doing the Burr method. 2022 comes yeah. along around February, and we're in a tight situation because the interest rates are going up so much. And, yeah. and so it had a um, negative effect on me being able to squeeze cash out of the places. Fortunately for me, I am dealing with a lender that's known as a CDFI, which is a community development financial institution. And so these uh, organizations basically have come into existence to help underserved communities and people working within them get access to capital. So mm -hmm. while I didn't have the refi market, my lending partner still believed in me. So they yeah. kept giving me money and then I just had to tap other sources to kind of um, furnish my places. So as I talk to you right now, of all 22 homes that I have, I still own all of them. Um, as you know, depending on what your perspective is on, is the Fed going to uh, cut rates in <laughs> Q1? Are they going to cut rates in the back half of the year? Are they going to cut rates in 2025? Um, you know, that'll have an impact on pricing and what have you. But I, I believe that this spring I'll be able to put uh, my properties on the market and uh, test the market. And hopefully there's certainly equity in it. But obviously you've got to access that equity by people actually purchasing them. So yeah. I hope to sell and when you have a, a, a portfolio like mine and it's in such a close proximity to each other, you got to do it one at a time. You know, you can't yeah. put five on, on the market and, and you know, and, and compete with yourself. So you got to kind of do this one at a time. But um, I'm very hopeful. And um, because the neighbor has undergone such change, uh, I, I feel like it's going to go well. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. That's incredible. And um, 
I, I kind of want to take a shift here because I, I know that there's probably a lot of questions that people will have as they watch this, whether now or in the future. But, um, you know, I, I guess I kind of want to ask a bit more on the tactical side. Like what are what are the benefits, right, to this means of strategy um, of, of, of building and renovating as opposed to just going out and buying it yourself? Like what would you say is the biggest benefit having done it this way? Um, and maybe in that same breath, what are some of the cons, right? I think you spoke already to, you know, interest rates went up and that kind of tightened your margin a bit because now you're not able to refi as much because of the monthly. Um, but there's obviously a ton of benefits. Can you speak to those? Well, I think the major benefit is you're kind of captain of your own destiny as you're building something. And as you... I, I don't think that there's, I started out as an investor and W2 yeah. guy and I was going to kind of, um, you know, just go check out my money and let my GC do all these things. And I, and I stopped being a, an investor and went to a developer and then a contractor. But when you make those kind of shifts, it, it's really a belief system. I believe, and, and my thesis is that the city and the state and the federal government just spent $30 million. I'm one mile from John Hopkins. Johns Hopkins is a global destination, a global yeah. hospital. People come yeah. from all over the world. Ruth Bader Ginsburg died there. The last two uh, yeah. Congress people, that, that, this is your last stop. It's Johns Hopkins, period. And so it's a, it's a place that's always going to have demand for workers and what have you. And I just felt like it was just too close to not, um, if for lack of a better word, make a bet on this. And yeah. once I got my first two done and then five and then six, I just believed. And again, I mean, what I had, my thesis was, and what my lender kept saying was, Hey, the guy hasn't sold any, but look, they're all rented, they're all cash flowing. And so the, my lender believed that way. And what I believed is that, hey, they're cash flowing now. I got a couple of things. Because they're all in a row or very close, I could possibly offload this to an investor one day. And you could look at this as almost like a hotel or a multifamily home because they're all right next to each other. Yeah. Same type of guests. Um, let me throw in a curveball that I tell folks all the time, too. I, I have travel nurses right now, but Johns Hopkins University is right next to the hospital, as well as their nursing school. So there's opportunities to um, get uh, contracts with the university or with the nursing school. And so now I got a master lease. What if I have a master lease with one of these entities here? that pay me X amount. And basically all I'm doing is managing turnover for their students. And their students are saying, you know, if, if, you're, if you're in med school, that's four years. You're not going nowhere. If you're a travel nurse, that's 90 days. Yeah. So the upside to getting, uh, to first of all, creating housing, first of all, where there wasn't any. And then, and then basically what I'm doing as my architect likes to say is I'm building my own market yeah. and, my own comps yeah. and it, took, it takes kind of um, patience and persistence and like a dogged belief that this is going to work. It has to work. And uh, let me just digress if you don't mind a little bit. Please. I was in corporate America for 20 years and I had national responsibilities as a, a, a government sales rep and later as um, a government lobbyist, uh, state-based lobbyist that I travel for I traveled 150 nights a year for you know 15, 20 years. So the one thing that I can identify with is a very business traveler and a traveler that just wants to come home and do two things. One, get on the internet and be wash your clothes. I mean, that's the first thing our guests want to do when they get there. Yeah. I know this. I've I've done it. And so I've been able to, I think, speak a language to my guests and understand what it is that they like and have been highly rated and 
a super host for many years now because I have a true identification with them. I know what they want. I listen to their feedback and they feel comfortable. I've got ring cameras. I got electric doors. I've got you, you feel safe and secure there. Believe it or not, well, it's believable. The Johns Hopkins shuttle comes right past my front doors on the 2100 and 2200 block of East Chase. You yeah. literally walk right outside your front door. The bus will pick you up right there. It's only a mile. I mean, you could walk. I don't know if you <laughs> want to. Yeah. I mean, all these things moving towards this goal. And so really for me, La May, it was kind of a test of patience. Like, do you believe it this much? Will you stay the course? Will you be persistent? You've got to see things that other people don't see when you're a developer. All they yeah. saw was boarded up buildings and people using drugs in the back of these buildings. Those people are long gone and these homes are no longer boarded up and they're making money and people are living there. We've had two or three babies born uh, yeah. at the place. It's a really, really incredible feeling to breathe life into a place. I mean, there's no like amount of money where, I mean, I got the pictures. I can show you what this place <laughs> looked like before. And uh, it's just a 180 degree change to something that had potential to now something that's thriving, that's yeah. serving the community. People yeah. are happy to be there and um, it works. Yeah. Man, what I love about your story, Mark, is I can tell that you've put a lot of time and effort into just making sure that your purpose is aligned with your goals, right? Of the outcome of your business and what you're doing and how it's serving the community. And so my, my, my follow-up question then to everything that you just shared is how has what you're doing now um, changed or influenced your future business, right? Your future plans. Like do you plan to do this and continue to build off this momentum in Baltimore is there plans of you going to other distressed communities and maybe other states and replicate it? What what is what's the next five years look like for Mark and his business? I had a boss that used to say that um, make sure you answer every call that you get because you just never know what they're gonna say. And I kind of feel that way that I just don't know what the next person's gonna say. I am from Los Angeles. I'm a true West Coast person, even though I've been on the East Coast for the last 20 years. I do not like winter. And I've been saying for years I was going to move back to L.A. Then I was going to be bi-coastal. And then these opportunities kept coming. Yeah. And, you know, to um, again, as an investor, it's easy to live in two places. Yeah. As a contractor, it's not easy. As you've got... <laughs> you got so... Uh, you got yeah, yeah. So now it's not as easy. Now I have people that are very capable that work for me, and I'm appreciative of everything that they do. Um, but uh, I can't tell you for certain, you know, what's going to happen next. I believe there's tremendous opportunity again here in Baltimore. I think this model could be replicated in certain cities um, around the U.S. I mean, it cannot be replicated, say, in my hometown of Los Angeles, just because the prices are, it's, the barrier entry is so high. So yeah. it, you, it will be a specific market. Um, um, so we'll just kind of have to see where it goes. But I literally could work here for the next 10 years and still be trying to solve the problem of disinvestment. And when I say me, I mean me and a lot of other developers. There are certainly others that are here that are very capable men and women that are building, that are doing good jobs. Um, the issue is that, you know, there was a great exodus from Baltimore um, starting in the 1950s and never stopped. And so basically it was like last person out, turn off the lights. And I mean, literally just, you could go through blocks and blocks here that have just been abandoned, just nothing there. And now what we're seeing, if you look at, being a suburb of Washington, D.C., just not too far from uh, Philly or what have you, you see this kind of middle ground where if you're a young professional, you want to buy a condo in D.C., $750 million maybe for, you know, maybe 700 square feet. Yeah. You could buy a, a whole lot of something. You could buy two or three homes 
in Baltimore for that same price, be right off the train, 25 minute commute into work, hold it for two or three years, sell it for a huge profit, and then roll that money into whatever you actually want to do. If you want to actually yeah. live in DC, you want to live in Northern Virginia, you want to stay in Maryland. I just think that it positions so well, and there's just so many opportunities, and people are going to see the value. I mean, I, our governor and our mayor are very, very laser focused on reducing um, the barriers to entry. I'm, I'm blessed because I am someone that's known by um, the Department of Community Housing and Development. So they do look out for me if when things come up or when there's uh, properties available. So I, I've got to say that the government understands the needs of Baltimore City and they do respect individual developers. So, I mean, it's a really, really green field, Lame, as far as what I'm gonna be doing next and where I'm gonna be. Um, I will say that I, I have started doing some private development um, for a company that basically they wanted me to build houses on the next on the next street over for where I was already building. So that's yeah. a natural kind of progression. Um, so that could even be an, uh, a long extension or vertical that I could follow. So tons of opportunity. And I, I feel really blessed and fortunate to be in a situation where um, it's growing, people get it, and um, Baltimore is becoming a, an exciting place to be. That's awesome. Man, Mark, you are a one wealth of knowledge, just especially given the specific niche strategy that you've implemented and executed, but also just incredibly inspiring. Like I enjoy listening to the tactfulness of your strategy, but then also in the inspiration in your, in, in your story and your message. So I appreciate, appreciate you being on here. I, uh, the last question I guess I'd ask you just before we wrap up is, um, you know, what, what, what piece of advice would you give people that are wanting to maybe step into, uh, the short-term rental game or maybe into, starting something similar like you jumping in the renovation game development into short-term rentals, what would be your best piece of advice for them? I think my first piece of advice would be is to ask questions of those that are doing it and uh, see if you can kind of tag along and day in the life of, or what have you. I think that, you know, generally people's favorite subject is themselves. If you ask somebody what they're doing <laughs> and what they're about and your interest, They'll, they'll tell you. And so I, I think that there's no secret sauce here. There really isn't. You got to yeah. come to work every day. You got to work hard. You got to treat the people that work with you well. You got to pay your vendors. You got to pay your suppliers. You got to do all these things. These are, I mean, these basic tenets of business. I, I mean, you know, you don't have to have a fancy college degree to know how to do those things. But I think uh, if you want to model yourself after somebody, find a mentor, ask a mentor, can you tag along, ask plenty of questions. I just think that there's so many like failed and missteps you can take and make in this game. And I think there's plenty of people that would try to help you not do that. Yeah. I want to make when people ask me questions and I get calls regularly, I give them strategies on how to deal with contractors because sometimes contractors can be unscrupulous. So there's ways and strategies to deal with that. Somebody, somebody stole some money from me. I'm going to try and teach you how you won't get money stolen from you. You don't have to yeah. fall in the same place I fell in. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. Watch people ask questions. People want to see you succeed in this business. The government wants to see you succeed. Real estate agents want to see you succeed. Homeowners want to see you succeed. The neighbors want to see you succeed. There's a lot of folks that want good things to happen for you. Love it, love it, love it. As I said, Mark, I just appreciate you being here, brother. Where uh, where can people find you? Where can people get a hold of you? You know what? Just as my memory, just why don't you just hit me up on email, mark at surebemore.com. So it's just M-A-R-K, S-U-R-E, like the word sure, B as in boy, M-O-R-E. Dot com mark at sure be more dot com and uh awesome. i'll get back to you it might not be tomorrow but i will get back to you <laughs> love it love it like i said mark thank you so much for being here thank you for sharing your story 
I, uh, it's part of my favorite part about being a part of this podcast is being able to hear people's inspiring story and why they built what they built. So you are a incredible human being. I'm thankful to call you a friend now. Thank you for being your brother. And uh, 6FF, investor, community, fearless investors, make sure you hit this guy up. Absolute stud. Thanks again for being here, brother. Appreciate you. Anytime. Best to you, my friend. There you have it, Mark Reed. Uh, I always appreciate when people can come on and not only drop tactical nuggets in the industry, but also share their heart, their purpose, and be able to share how their business aligned with their purpose can leave an incredible impact and legacy on, 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 on people around you as you build something very, very special. And that's what Mark did. Uh, again, if you want to continue to hear from guests like this, please make sure you subscribe. Uh, but additionally, we got new content coming out every day for you, for our viewers, for our audience. We are nothing without you. So we appreciate you being here. Uh, we have some new caster freebies on the caster website. Make sure you check that out at the fearlessinvestors.co. Uh, but then additionally, just make sure you continue to subscribe and watch. We got some big hitters in the lineup. Excited to continue to share more of these with you. Fearless investors, we out, baby.